right. Uh, I think we are live. Let me check. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sili li amri wa ahlal wakdatan min lisani yaqa'u qawli. Yes, we are live. Assalamu alaikum wa marhaban wa ahlan wa sahlan bikum jami'an fi liqa'ana al-mutakarrir kama wa'adnaakum kul layla al-sa'a thamanya nus. Rah nihki liyom wa naltaqi ma' majmu'a min al-shabab wa al-shabat في المرحلة الثانوية لنتعرف على همومهم سواء كانت الأكاديمية الاجتماعية أم النفسية اهتماماتهم أفكارهم هواياتهم خلال, هواياتهم خلال هذا الحجر نحاول أن نتكلم عن الأمور التي التي يواجهوها خلال عملية الحجر ضغوط النفسية الأزمات نستفيد من هذا لتعزيز فهم أبنائنا وبناتنا في هذه المرحلة الحساسة ولنخلق علاقة صحية وصحيحة وناجحة بيننا وبينهم طبعا اليوم معنا صديقي بهاء تميمي حيكون هو المقدم الاساس انا حكون مساعد سمهاو وهو انفايتد ثلاثه من زملائه فور برايفسي هم قرروا انه بعضهم يطلع بكاميرا وبعضهم بدون كاميرا وي ريسبكت ذات وبنشكرهم على وجودهم معنا وبنشكر الجميع اللي حيحاول انه يساعدنا اذا في عنده اسئله بده يسالها للشباب والصبايا اللي مش قادر يسال ابنه مثلا او يعرف منه مباشره بيستطيع انه يكون معنا هون اهلا وسهلا فيكم شباب يمنى عمر تزريا ويلكم وان شاء الله نشوفكم بنكون معكم اليوم بسهره ممتازه اهلا اهلا فيكم فاولا انا راح ابدا مع هبدا مع تيزري اولا بدي تيزري would you like to uh, to speak in arabic or english english all right so uh, tell us a bit about yourself how are you today alhamdulillah i'm doing well so uh, how um, how are things how are things going how is the quarantine days how, how do you feel about life uh, to be honest, it's pretty cool. I feel like um, I'm working on my health. I have a lot of time to do things that I enjoy, so I'm grateful for it. Mm-hmm. What's uh, what school do you uh, what school do you go to? Like, what type of school and what grade are you in? High school, grade twelve. Mm-hmm. What type of school do you go to? Public school, Catholic school, private? Public. Uh, did you uh, did you start with Canadian education from the beginning, or were you somewhere else before you came here? Yeah, I started in French school in Canada, and then mm-hmm. I moved to England, and I did public school in England, and then I moved to Canada, and I did English school, public school in Canada, and then mm-hmm. English alternative, and then back to public. And tell us a bit about your experiences. How does British school differ? Uh, how does French French and English and like do you feel that school is uh, preparing you for the future that you would like to have? Um, personally, I don't feel like school is preparing me for the future that I personally want to have. But well, what is this? What's the future you would like to have? See, I would like to be a business owner and entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like school is has taught me anything about being a business owner working with people and being you know like a leader i don't feel mm-hmm. like there's been lessons about that in school but in terms of my experience with the uk system versus the canadian system um i feel like it's very different obviously because in canada there's is semestered whereas mm-hmm. in the uk it's the full year and you're only in school until grade 11 grade 9 is when you start taking um what's it called your courses basically for your GCSEs which are like your final year tests yeah. in grade 11 but obviously it's a different system they're preparing you for you to go into the world of college and then after college university whereas in Canada they're sort of just preparing you for graduation and if you want to go to university or college then you can choose upon yourself to prepare yourself for that 
Which, which system, system do you think works work better? Um, personally, I like the British system better um, because I feel like the teacher, it's easier to make connections between students and teachers when you have to see the teacher for the entire year. Um, as well as the fact that you get to choose in grade nine what you want to focus on uh, for your GCSEs and your A-levels, which are tests at, at the end of the year. But in Canada, grade nine is when you start high school, you're forced, like, they force you to take obligatory courses, obviously. And some are courses that people aren't necessarily interested in. So it isn't until grade 11, grade 12 that you have the freedom to choose. But unfortunately, even though they make it, even though they think that they give you a lot of options in terms of courses in grade 11 and grade 12. Um, the courses are only taught in the school based on the demand for them. And a lot of schools yeah. don't have high demand for certain courses. So students are forced to take courses that they don't personally want to take, or they're forced to take a course that isn't beneficial to their future plans just because they need the credit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes there can be, uh, there can be a course that the student wants, but isn't offered because exactly. there just isn't demand for it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you, you spoke about uh, making relations, relation, relationships with the teachers. Do you feel that um, a relationship with a teacher is um, beneficial? How far, how far do you think that relationship can go? Do you think that that relationship should be strictly professional or should we try to build more personal relations with our teachers? Um, I don't think you have to build a necessarily personal relationship in the sense that the teacher knows about your personal life and you know about their life. I think it can be professional, but when a teacher shows interest in you and thinks that you like can see the potential that you have and is a good teacher and they treat you with respect as an equal instead of treating you as inferior and you build a relationship with that teacher, they can inspire you to work harder. I know in my experience, I've had a couple of teachers, um, mostly in the UK, who have inspired me to work harder just because they were really great at their job and you could tell that they put in extra effort and extra work so that you could do better. Uh, for example, when I was in grade six in England, we had to take a SATS test. It's kind of like EQAO, but it's um, in grade six. Um, mm -hmm. And basically in our in i was in a math class and there are different levels of the sats test that you could have taken you could have taken level six or level five and level five was the general class like even if you were in, like level five was the highest class but if you were like a prodigy or a genius or whatever they'll make you do a level six so my math teacher he actually gave extra time every wednesday after school for an hour to teach some of the students, some of the level six students, how to do work. And he had a table in, in the class specifically for the level six students, and he would give them different work, but he, it, would, it wasn't enough that it would separate them from the rest of the class, but it was enough to basically um, nurture and mold their talents into better work. And mm -hmm. I, at first I started off in the five, in level five set, and I really felt like I wanted to do better and be better because the teacher was so great that I wanted to do better for him, you know? And he ended up inspiring me to be a lot better. And eventually he put me on the level six and I did the level six and I did pretty well in my SATS test, you know? So I feel like when you have a teacher who inspires you to work better and work harder because they're putting in work and they genuinely want to see you win, then it's more likely for you to succeed, you know? And not just that, but also personal relationships, professional relationships with your teachers, you know, it might seem like your teacher is not really allowed to have bias in terms of their marking, but the way they feel about you and your attitude is definitely going to be reflected in some of the marks that they give you, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's always better for you to have a good relationship with your teachers. But, yeah. So you're saying that um, like the mental health of the student like can be changed by the teacher and that would reflect on their marks. Do you think that um, schools do enough to care for mental health in at uh, for for the students? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I've had some experiences in some schools where they offer psychotherapists, and that's very mm -hmm. recent. And there's only like one or two, but it's not really. Um, 
publicly stated in the school, yeah, we have a psychotherapist who would be happy to work with you. Like they don't make that a very public thing. It's only like once you get to your worst point and you actually seek help from them, then they give you this assistance. I feel like it should be more mainstream, but mm. not just that. I feel like um, teachers, teachers aren't necessarily given the chance to build close relationship with their students because they only see them for half a year. So if a teacher sees the student for half a year, like four months, and they're thinking, I don't personally like this student, it's not that deep to them because they're not gonna see them after that. You know, they only have four months with you and you move on. And the difference between a student and a teacher is that a teacher is teaching 30 people in one class and they have multiple different classes. So it's at least like a hundred students sometimes, but the, t the students only have four teachers. So for us, we see, the we see the teachers very differently to how the teachers see us. And so for us, it's important to have a good teacher and a teacher who is who genuinely cares for your education and your learning and your the betterment of your mind and the expansion of your mind in terms of education because that way we feel like, okay, we're gonna work hard because we see that you want us to do well, you know? And you believe in us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would, you, what would you change about schools? Like you have, a lot of, um, you have a lot of criticism to give to schools, but what would you change and what would you keep the same? Is there anything good about the schools that you see? Um, Obviously, yeah, there's benefit in schools, you know, because there's benefit in different classes in in the what's it called the variety of options. I think that's a great thing. It's a great thing to have variety. But I feel like I went to alternative school last year and I went to public school um, also for last year. When I was in grade 11, I spent half the year in alternative school and half the year in regular school and i really personally enjoyed alternative school because what do you, you mean tell what, do you, what do you mean with alternative alternative is it's a different um it's a different program so basically instead of doing four credits per semester you're doing one and you're expected to finish within six weeks so that you can get extra credits you have to be 16 and older to go to alternative school hmm. some people you know are sent there because of their behavioral issues but other people are sent there because they're really smart they don't work well in the regular school environment you know things like that i personally chose to go to alternative school because i was not a, like i was not doing well in the regular school environment in terms of my attendance like my marks were doing good but my attendance wasn't so i decided that alternative might be a better option for me because you'd only have to be there from 8 30 till 12 45 whereas a public school you'd be there from nine to three Mm. And I personally enjoyed Alternative a lot better. I felt like as soon as I walked in, everybody, all the teachers were really welcoming. And it was a smaller environment. I think there was only like, you know, 100, 200 students there. And all the teachers would say hello to you and they would be addressed by their first name and they would address you by whichever name you choose, you choose to be addressed by. So if you had a nickname that you preferred, they would address you by that and you call them by their first name. And every time they see you, you say hello, you talk to them, you know, and you build relationships with them. And they gave you a lot more freedom, but they still expected you to do well and put in work, you know? It wasn't like, okay, just do whatever you need, but it's like, okay, we're here for you if you need any help. And, you know, just to keep you on track, you should be doing this many assignments a week. If you need help, I'm contactable by email or whatever. So, so you know what I mean? Let me guess, you like it because uh, you were closer to the teachers? You felt like you have a better relation there? I liked it because I felt like I was being treated like an adult. You know, I felt like I was being treated like an equal instead of being treated like just a student. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Was there, was there more um, independence in the alternative school? So like yeah there was personally it worked really well for me because you're meant to teach yourself but you have teachers in case you need them you know what i mean um mm -hmm. if you're a person who's very disciplined then you'll do really well in that setting because you can finish courses really fast i finished my grade 11 math course in nine days and i got a 94 um, which is better than what I got in regular school. It took me half a half a year to basically, you know, get 70s. So obviously for me, it worked better. 
but obviously to each their own at the end of the day, I felt like in the alternative setting, they respected you as a human being, as an individual. They didn't see you as like, oh, you're just one of the students and you're reliant upon me. It's more like you do what you need to do. And if you need my help, I'm here for you. You understand? You know, uh, we learn every day. Uh, honestly, it's first time I've hearing about this uh, alternative schooling. Uh, yeah. Thank you for letting us know about it. Of course. Yeah. Is there any difference between the personal relationships in alternative schools or public schools? Um, definitely. I feel like in public schools, there's a lot of different teachers, obviously, but you don't necessarily speak to them on a regular basis, you only speak to your teachers. And a lot of the time, if you're talking to your teacher, it's not genuinely because you like them, it's just because you wanna get a good yeah. vibe from them. So you become friends with them. And, and you talk mm -hmm. to them if you need work, if you need help or something like that. But like, if I was in a math class and I had a, one math teacher for my class, I wouldn't necessarily go speak to the other math teacher. But in alternative school, in the one that I went to, there was like a lounge setting um the way that alternative school is set out basically you have a class from 8 30 a.m until 9 15. oh no not 9 15 sorry 9 45 so it's a 75 minute block so you're still technically a full-time student because you're taking three three classes three 75 minute classes per day but you get two 15 minute breaks between each class um and in the 15 minute breaks they had like free food you know for the students who needed it and they also mm -hmm. had like a lounge area for you to go to so it wasn't like a cafeteria but it was like a bunch of couches and like a pool table and a few desks you know mm -hmm. and if you were in the lounge and you saw other teachers they would just talk to you and they would say hi how are you how's your day what's going on you know and they would just have conversations with you and if you didn't want to have a conversation with them i mean you made it like i'm not really feeling this they want to talk to you it's not if you're in a public school and you see a teacher walking by you're not necessarily going to say hello unless you have history with that teacher you know what i mean I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, i have a question uh, are you going to the university next year not next year the year after but, yeah? but i'm taking a gap year inshallah but the year after uh, are, are you worried about finishing this year with this COVID-19 situation? No. See, because um, they said they said that um, it wouldn't be affecting our grades. It wouldn't be affecting but, but our chance to do, graduate. What, what do you feel? I hope about? it doesn't affect my chance. Um, I think, you know, I'm not particularly worried until I, I'll worry when they say that, you know, yeah this, this will affect your chance of graduation but i feel like as it stands bc and alberta they both canceled school for the rest of the year and they gave an automatic graduation to the grade 12s who were expected to graduate this semester so i feel like if worse comes to worse that's what ontario should do as well but obviously i don't know but as it stands they haven't made any clear statements that it's gonna affect our graduation you know Mm -hmm. So let me guess you are a social person because you're going to be a business owner or business woman. Yes. Are you? Okay. I would like to. So, so how is it going now with, with, social, with social life? I feel like we have a lot of access um, to FaceTime and all types of social media, alhamdulillah, so we can contact people very easily and people respond genuinely quickly because most people are stuck at home. They have nothing else to do. So it hasn't particularly affected my social life at all. Do you miss this face-to-face -face social life? Um, not that much? Sort of, but, you know, not entirely. I feel like we haven't been in, in quarantine for that long that it's affected me seriously. You know, I see my family every day. I see some of my neighbors. And I'm cool with my neighbors. So I'm not like missing face to face interaction too much, like some people might be. Do you do some sport at home these days or are you just uh, studying? Um, I study, sometimes I take walks, like I'll take a walk around my around. neighborhood, but not necessarily sports. Tell me about your relation with your parents and your family. I don't know if you have brothers, sister. Yeah, I have yeah. four brothers and I love my mom. 
how's it going with them? Um, <laughs> you know, it's pretty good actually. Um, I feel like my family, we're, we don't, we're not too close, but we're not too far either. So like when we want to spend time together, we'll spend time together. Um, but sometimes obviously there's arguments, but not, it's not as bad as a lot of people I know, you know, so. Did, did you feel that this time give you a chance to get closer to them, to, to help them, to talk to them more? Yeah, definitely. I think it's given us all a chance to see each other often. You know, my older brother was in university and well, he's still in university, but he, I didn't see him often at home. And during the first like week of quarantine, I'm like, oh, I didn't even know this guy was here, you know? And now obviously it's more normal. <laughs> He seems to be a good guy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's very hard time. It's uh, yeah. unprecedented, so we we never yeah. expected that will happen, and nobody knew when it mm -hmm. will finish. But do you expect uh, like we gonna recover from this uh, like COVID nineteen time and go back to usual norm, or it will be a new norm? Um, I definitely think it's going to be a new norm. I don't think there's any way personally that we can come back from this um, worldwide virus that's so highly contagious um, without something new coming from it. You know what I mean? And that's why I encourage you now to start thinking about new business. Mm -hmm. Even you are like, what, 17 now or 16? Yeah. Or it, yeah. So you, you, you can start. Uh, there are a lot of examples your age people started successful business so start thinking where's the niche what we can do mm -hmm. what the community and people need and that's yeah. where we can step in and you don't need to study business as much as if you if you uh, want it you know the most important how to practice it true very true there is a questions about for you terry uh, what is your Arabic background? Um, so my father is Algerian and he speaks Arabic, but he's not Arab. He's Berber or Amazil. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so my family, when I went to visit them in Algeria, they would speak Berber, Amazil, or they would speak French. I speak Good. French, so that's how I speak to my family there. Um, mm -hmm. I started off in Arabic school when I was younger, but when I moved to the UK, I didn't do Arabic school anymore. And I only spoke, like, I spoke fluent French, basically. I didn't speak English. And okay. then I had to learn English, and I forgot my French. And my parents separated. So I live with my mom now. I don't, you know, my father is not in Canada, so we don't really speak to each other in Arabic or Amazigh. So as it stands, I speak English and French fluently. Um, I know a little bit of Arabic because of my religion, obviously, alhamdulillah, but... I'm not like fluent Arabic speaker, you know. So the question is here: your your Arabic background. Do you think it's it's uh, uh, cause you trouble in your social life at school and out of school? Sometimes, because people expect me to speak Arabic. Um, okay. But it's not really like a big impact on my life personally because once i explain it to people they understand sometimes people they kind of shame you a little bit for it they're like oh you know that's so Arab. like how come you don't speak your language um but that's not technically my language so it's complicated but at the end of the day i would love to learn arabic inshallah one day but i'm not particularly interested in any arabic dialects i would rather learn like quranic arabic and that's just for me you know Tazir. It's a yes. new business. It's yes. a new business. Go ahead. You're right. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a good time now. You're right. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of parents who are looking for good teachers for their. So you can make a platform to connect parents with with good teachers, and here you go. Mm -hmm. Why right. not? Why you are not. not. <laughs> well, uh, I I would like personally to thank you for your courage to be up live and talk to people. Uh, thank you, Baha, for inviting her. She is a great lady, and I would like to wish you all, all the best. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.
السلام عليكم السلام عليكم so here we have Omar and Yumna can you unmute please السلام yep. عليكم السلام عليكم السلام so uh, would you like to continue with English or switch to Arabic English Omar تحكي عربي ولا لا بحكي عربي طب كويس هاي عربيتك كويس صعبهاش علينا يا راجل خلاص اتكلم عربي يلا ممتاز ماشي انت حسنك اول نفس الاسئله الاولى انت عرفنا بحالك وايش مدرستك واي صف وايش نوع المدرسه انا في كاثوليك سكول بورد وانا في جريد 8 لسه ما دخلتش الهاي سكول بس هدخل السنه الجايه و الدراسه ما وقفتش لما وقفوا المدارس ان احنا نروح المدارس يعني بدانا اونلاين سكول وكل يومين بيبعتوا لنا تاسكس وبنعملها و يا yeah. في شيء انت متوقعه من المدرسه من الهاي سكول لما تدخلها في حكوا لكم شيء عنها وانتم في جريد 8 لا ممكن تعيد سؤال في شيء انت متوقعه من الهاي سكول في صوره للهاي سكول عندك فاضل شيء انت بتتمنى انه يصير او شيء انت خايف منه هو انا بصراحه حاسس ان هو يكون اسهل عشان هيكون في اربع سبجكتس هتاخدها في ترم واحد في سمستر واحد بس م-م. هنا في جريد 8 بيكون في تاخد كل السبجكتس على السنه كلها يعني ما بيكونش متقسمه. ففي يعني في الهاي سكول بتكون متقسمه اربع سبجكت كل سمستر فعشان كده هيكون اسهل. اها انتوا عندكم في المدارس كيف كيف تتعاون كيف علاقتكم مع الاساتذه والاداره وهي وال وهدول الناس؟ هو كله في المدرسه بيكون محترم للثاني يعني كل محترم ما فيش اي تنمر ما فيش اي حاجه والتيتشرز ما بيفرقوش ما بين اي ستودنتس يعني ما بيكونش عندهم بايست ستودنتس حد معين بيكون احسن ستودنت ولا حاجه زي كده يعني اها <تصفيق> يعني بيعرف درست في دول عربيه قبل هيك ولا كل دراستك هون لا انا جيت هنا من قريب انا كنت اصلا في مصر كنت في مصر ماليزيا تقدر تعمل كومبير بين ذيم؟ بديش تحكي احسن واسوء، بدي تحكي لي شو انت شاعر؟ شو النو... شو ال... شو اللي موجود هون احسن وشو اللي موجود هناك احسن؟ يعني كل نظام له حسناته. ماشي في مصر التعليم هناك مش يعني هنا ثانية ثانية معلش انا اسف. التيشيرت هنا مهتمين بالستودنتس اكثر من مصر. وماليزيا مهتمين بجد يعني عايزينهم يطلعوا حاجه كويسه وهنا في فاسيلتيز اكتر في المدرسه يعني في المدرسه في مثلا جيم في حاجات كتيره قوي في المدرسه بس في مصر ما فيش اي حاجه من الحاجات ديت قليل قوي لما يكون فيه وفي ماليزيا يعني مش كتير قوي يعني هنا في اكتر من ماليزيا وفي اكتر من مصر وفي مصر في تنمر وفي ماليزيا برضه في تنمر كتير بس هنا بيكون قليل قوي عشان الناس و... عشان التيشرز بيعلموا الستودنتس وهم بيكبروا ان ده ما ينفعش وده غلط بس في مصر مش قوي يعني سايبين الموضوع كده اها <تصفيق> بتحسوا ان التنمر بين ال بين مين بيصير اكتر بين الاولاد والاولاد ولا الاولاد على البنات ولا البنات على البنات؟ هو بصراحه البنات يعني بيكون اونلاين كله يعني ما فيش حد في المدرسه بتسهر مع البنات بس الولاد لو في تنمر بيكون يعني فيزيكالي بيكون ان ريل لايف الاساتذه بتحسوا انه بيحاولوا انهم يساعدوا الطلاب يتخطوا هذا التنمر اكيد اكيد يعني لو شافوا اي تنمر دايما بيحاولوا يوقفوه ويكلموا حتى المتنمر ويحاولوا يعرفوا هو ليه عمل كده ويعني يساعدوا ال الشخص اللي تنمر عليه. 
هسا بدي اغير الموضوع شوي لل لل للنظام الدراسي انتم عندكم في المدرسه الاساتذه بيجهزوكم للمستقبل بتحس انه المدرسه بتجهزك للمستقبل في المدرسه عندنا بيدرسونا كل حاجه كل السكيلز اللي احنا محتاجينها عشان نطلع اللي احنا عايزينه و احنا بنختار الكورس بتاعتنا في عشان ندخل الهاي سكول والكورس ديت اللي هتخلينا نكون اللي احنا عايزينه يعني مثلا لو عايز تكون تدخل انجينير اوكي شكله في علق ايش رايك نسال يمنى يمنى عنها معلش عمر دونت وري حنعمل الترنيشن حنسالك شوي وحنسال يمنى شوي يمنى نعم ماشي ف عمر ما قدر يجاوب سالفة ححاوله إلك، أنت حاسة إنه المدرسة بتجهزك للمستقبل؟ اه يعني بيخلوني أختار يعني الكورسات اللي أنا بدي إياها في جريد 11 و12 بس في أنا دلوقتي في جريد 10 يعني فلسه م-م. مش عارفة أختار أوي كل الكورسات اللي أنا عايزاها يعني لازم م-م. آخد الماث والساينس يعني كله على بعضه مش separated يعني أخذ بس البايو الوحدة أو هيك يعني ف يعني هم بيجهزوني بس لسه من بداية grade 11 و 12 عشان في grade 11 و 12 بعرف أختار الكورس اللي أنا بدي إياه يعني بس قبل هيك مش قوي هل أنت شايفة إنه أحسن إنهم يخلوا الطلاب يختاروا الكورسات تاعتهم قبل grade 11 ولا كويس مكان اللي هم حاطينه فيه؟ أم بصراحة أعتقد إنه ممكن يخلونا نختار من أول grade 10 علشان يعني الواحد لسه مش عارف يعني ممكن واحد مش متأكد بالضبط هو عايز بده يصير إيه يعني لما يكبر فلما يخلونا نختار من وإحنا لسه أصغر شوية يعني ممكن نعرف إحنا بدنا إيه يعني مه. هل هسا أنت شايفة إنه الكورسات اللي إجبارية في المدارس في الهاي سكول فرضا كورس الجغرافيا وكورسات الهيستوري وأربعة إنجليش مع بعض هاي أنت شايفتها مفيدة؟ هي مفيدة يعني الإنجليش أكيد هذا مفيد بس ممكن الجغرافيا والهيستوري هم مفيدين يعني بيدونا معلومات عامة بس مش كل م- واحد يعني للكارير تبعه بده الجغرافيا مثلا أو الهيستوري فممكن يعني أعتقد إنه مش لازم يخلوا كم فلسفي علينا يعني شو حابة تطلع يا يمنى؟ أنا بدي شي في المجال الميديكال يعني م-م. يعني حد طب أو هيك يعني مثلا ليش بتتوقع إن الجيوغرافي ما حيساعدك في هذا الموضوع؟ الجيوغرافي ممكن تساعدني شوي بس مش قوي يعني هو لو أنا في الطب أنا بدي شي زي مثلا أكتر بيولوجي شوية أو شي م-م. يعني تكون ممكن على humans أكتر وهيك بس ممكن برضه شوية geography عشان plants برضه وهيك بس يعني. شوفي فيش فيش science ما بتستفيدي منه لما تدرسي في المدرسة يعني أنا من موضوع الناس كتير بيحكوا إنه زي ما حكيتي تاريخ مثلا ما بينفع في كل مرض حتدرسي في الطب حتدرسي التاريخ تبعه وهذا هذا جزء من التاريخ في اسمه شغلة اسمها medical history يعني مش اللي هم هدول historian في الميديسن اللي بحكي لك كيف اجى المرض وكيف مرض ومين مرض اول شيء ومين مات وكيف عالجوه هذول هيستوريان في في الميديسن وفي الجيوغرافي مهم جدا في موضوع الانفكشس ديزيز زي اللي صار هلا عندنا في الكوفيد 19 الجيوغرافي مهم كيف نعرف شو التضاريس تبعت الاماكن وين بروح كيف بنتقل هاي كل هالامور مهمه ف Believe me, every science you learn, it will give you a good base. Just a suggestion. هو صحيح ولكن ولكن مرات لما ندرس المواد ندرسها بشكل ما بيفيدنا إطلاقا. فرضا هلا لما أنا خلصت الهيستوري ما خلصت الهيستوري في جريد 10 أغلب الكورس كان عن 11 سبتمبر ما كان له أي علاقة بأي إشي تاني. في كتير أشياء إحنا ندرسها. ما ما لها اي علاقه بحياتنا ما لها اي علاقه بالمستقبل اللي احنا بدنا اياه ولا حتى بسمعونا لما نط... لما نحكي لهم انه مش هاي الاشياء اللي احنا بدنا اياها هي اشياء احنا مجبرين ندرسها 
What do you think, Yumna? Okay, هي ممكن بعض الناس بتكون هتحتاجها في المستقبل تبعها بس يعني في بعض الناس برضه مش هتحتاجها يعني أنا مش عارفة قوي بس ممكن أحسن لو خلوا اختياري يعني أو شيء ممكن يعني في أح- أكيد هتحتاج عمر شو what do you think مين أحسن تختار ولا <تصفيق> so I think that like if you need it for your career it's going to benefit you like you need to take it because it's going to benefit you but if you're not gonna use it for your career you can just like learn it in a general uh like yeah just in general you don't really need to get into details and like what happened in this war and stuff like that because mm-hmm. if you're not going to use it for your career don't stuff your mind with with like thing, things you're not going to use right mm-hmm. because you only have four courses to pick you can only pick four courses per semester And yep. like you need that time to choose what will actually benefit you instead of forcing you to take things you will not use. So I'll ask uh, Omar another question. Do you feel that the, that the schools do enough to help with uh, mental health of the students? Yes, we do have uh, people who are specifically like they're specifically hired to help students who have mental health issues and they even have their own like classroom whenever like you feel that you're tired or like you need to talk to somebody just go to them and talk to them and we even have a subject that is about mental health like a specific subject And we learn it for the whole year. Mm-hmm. This is for grade eight, so I'm not sure about high school, but I'm yeah, pretty we sure. We have nothing like that. At least in at least in my high school, because high schools can be different depending on which one you go to. Mm-hmm. But in the high school I went to, um, mental health was basically non-existent. I'm not sure why. Maybe because we have a small population, but um, the guidance counselors that we were supposed to talk to if anything happened, uh, they weren't um, like medical professionals. They were people who studied guidance, not people who studied mental health. They had some certificates in some areas of mental health, like suicide prevention. But other than that, they weren't professionals. And when a professional did come, they would only come on like when you, um, when you specifically asked for them. They wanted to be here for all time. What about uh, what about you, Yumna? Yeah. How how do you feel about mental health in schools? Okay, so like what Omar said is is right. But like sometimes like the teachers don't really care because like sometimes they just like give you lots of work and not really think about you or like how you feel like if you're stressed or something like that. Mm-hmm. And like like the teachers just kind of. Don't care with most of them, kind of. So, yeah. So, this is a question to Yumna and Omar. What do you do if you stress? How do you, how do you cope with that? And like terms of how teachers help us or what? No, no, no. How do you yourself? Nobody can t- help you. So, what do you do? How do you de-stress yourself? So, do you have any methods to give? people yes yeah, so if I'm if I'm stressing about something a lot I would go and talk to my parents about it or even my siblings because they will like find a way to help me Good. and if that doesn't really work I will just go to prayer and Quran and of course mm-hmm. like this is really good like for stress Uh, like also family is good for stress too because they know how to help you because they understand you like the most experience too yeah. mm-hmm. uh, Yumna yeah what do you do if you are stressed okay so if I'm stressed about something like if I have like lots of work and, and like I don't really know what to do then like 
I'm just gonna sit there and like think about it and try to like plan it out and see like what I could do instead of just sitting and like overthinking and like you know giving myself anxiety and stuff like that. So, what I understand, you are trying to uh, think about this problem, or yeah, okay, yeah, try to How... think about it. Okay. Do you use any method to think about it, or you just start thinking? Do you use pen and paper and write? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I write it on like a piece of paper just to like help me out. But like most of the time, I just like think about it, or like I could talk to like someone or like my friends or something like that. Good. So what I, I I've learned from Omar, there are two methods Omar is using. One is talking to his parents or siblings. And the second one is a prayer by asking Allah to help him. Uh, both are very good methods. Thank you, Omar. Yumna also uh, suggested two methods. One is uh, trying to uh, write down the problems and try to solve it uh, with uh, thinking about it. The second is talking to somebody. Could be a teacher, could be friend. Yeah, and it could be your parents also, like your. Do sister. you talk about about problems with your parents? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Everything Are they... or half half. Yeah, like I talk to my mom. Yeah, like about stuff like that's bothering me in school and stuff, and also sometimes my dad. Do you feel there are some problems that parents don't really understand? Um. Like, or don't not, get it serious? I don't think so. Because, like, when I talk to my mom or, like, tell her about something that's bothering me, like, she'd understand and, like, try to help me. And, like... like no, in general, not about you, Yumna. In general, do you think yeah. there are some some problems that we parents don't understand? Yeah, in general, I think, yeah. Because, like, some of my friends, like, their parents, like won't really understand them if like let's say they're depressed or something like their parents would be like like depression is not a thing you know like their parents would say stuff like that and like they won't really understand how they feel and things like that but how, how do you how do you what do you do with stress just about the worst thing you can do i just keep it and think about the subject way too much but eventually it just um gets to the point where it just boils over. It's like, I just handle it really, really badly. But eventually so ignorance. it just passes. Ignorance. You ignore it. Not really. I don't ignore it. I think about it way too much. Oh, yeah, the opposite. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is now, not also, good, yeah? Yeah, it's not. It doesn't work. Also, I don't talk to my parents mm -hmm. ever. And I keep, um, keep like doing the same thing over and over again. So like every st every time I had a problem and I went to my parents, it somehow worked out, but I still refused to talk to them about the problem. Why? Why? Why do you feel you? Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I have to keep up a certain image in front of my parents. The funny thing is that my dad is sitting right there, so like he's hearing all of this. <laughs> so. It feels like I have to keep. Uh, it feels like I have to keep a certain image in front of my parents, even though that's not true. But because the changes that have happened to me recently all came um, suddenly, so I didn't have a plan to deal with them from before, because I came to Canada from Saudi Arabia, which is a very different culture, mm -hmm. and the schools were very different. So I wanted to deal with every single problem on my own before uh, reporting it to the higher-ups, basically. Well, it's good if you start thinking that you have to work on your problems because later on, no matter within five, ten years, you're going to do mm -hmm. that by yourself. So you are training yourself. But talking to the, somebody... The problem is to like, um, keep yourself alive and not die from the stress until you get there. Yeah, but talking to somebody, it's very important methods to distress yourself. It's very mm -hmm. important to find a partner, a friend, a, a father, a mother, whoever, 
an uncle uh, to call and ask for opinions. Uh, it could be right, it could be wrong. And again, Baha, Omar, and Yumna, every one of us making mistakes, even your parents. Mm -hmm. And I've learned from my life experience and from my parents, if you do not make mistakes, it means you do not work. So people who work harder make more mistakes. People who work less, they make less mistakes. It's normal. And we are mm -hmm. all like, it's, it's, it's a human nature that we make mistakes. But the good things we learn from our mistakes. Yes, but sometimes the mistake is too big to learn from. Nothing is big. Nothing is big. Uh, Kentucky, who, who, who founded Kentucky Chicken, he made huge mistakes in investments for years. And when he reached, I think, 60-something, he started his franchise, Kentucky KFC, and he became a billionaire. So there is nothing wrong in making mistakes. And even if these mistakes are big, because Allah will forgive you always, Believe me, your parents will do their best to forgive you. Maybe a little bit of time, but making mistakes, it makes us stronger. It makes us with more experience. It makes us more confidence. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. Afraid of not correcting these mistakes. Some people also can't get over the mistake. Sometimes people just can't get over it. Because like, I've yeah. seen it so many times because... At school, there are a lot of students that make mistakes, and these mistakes end up breaking them forever. You can't bounce back from some mistakes. I agree. So and especially, people... especially with the school, sometimes doing the the completely the wrong thing to dealing with uh, the stress of the students, like they have a set of protocols that they will follow no matter what, instead of actually listening to the student who's the problem is about. Well, this is again, it's a mistake of the school. Yeah, you but see? no one no one corrects it. No one no one changes so, that. Yeah. Maybe you go grow up, uh, get into the board, uh, get a, to be a trustee of that school board and change that mistake. Because nobody talked about it. What do you think, Yumna? Yeah. Do you think there are mistakes that we can't correct? Um, like, I don't think it's, like, we can't correct them, but, like, maybe, like, we're gonna, like, do them over and over again. Like, like, sometimes to be able to correct it, like, I'm not talking about the ones in school, like, let's say you did a mistake on something, and, like, you got, like, you got a bad mark or something, like, that's gone, you know, you can't change anything about it. But, like, I'm talking about, like, life mistakes or something like that. And, like, you can change them, but some people just, like, I don't know, like, they can't change change it or, like, they just, like, redo them over and over again. Like, you got me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, Omar? Yes? What about the mistakes? What do you think about these mistakes? Can we make mistakes normally? Is it normal to make mistakes? Well... It's not only normal, it's good to make mistakes. Because as you said, it's good to learn. Like, it's good to make mistakes because you can learn from them. And it gives you experience. It, like, warns you the next time you do something so you don't actually do the same mistake. So I believe it's good to do mistakes. And nothing cannot be corrected. It's just going to be hard to correct if it's a big mistake. Yeah. How they said mm -hmm. it's good to make mistakes, it's stupid to make this mistake again. Yeah. Okay. So there are some questions, Manil Manil Jumhur. Yumna, there is a question for both of you, I think. Uh, do you think the school in Canada are hard? Oh, we're talking Arabic, sorry. Do you think there are more difficulties in the Canadian schools than the previous schools? أنا أتكلم الأول هو بصراحة بالعكس يعني هنا في المدارس أسهل بكتير يعني التعليم فيها أسهل بيعرفوا يوصلوا المعلومة للستيرنس أكتر و 
يعني ما بيدوش information كتيرة قوي في نفس الوقت مع ان الواجبات كتير بس يعني الواجبات بتكون عن حاجة واحدة بس معينة عايزين يخلوا السيرنس يفهموها يمنى اوكي انا بالنسبة لي برضو نفس الشي يعني المدارس هنا بالنسبة لي اسهل لان بس عندي فور كورسز بس في السمستر الواحد وهذا يعني بيسهل علي عشان كده ما فيش حاجات كتيرة لازم اذكرها في نفس الوقت بس عندي اربعة وبرضو يعني في مصر مثلا الدراسة كانت بس يعني الواحد بيحفظ ومش بيفهم بس هنا بحس ان احنا بنفهم الاول وبعدين بنحفظ يعني, يعني هل بتحسوا انه مرات ال انه الاساد بيفهموا عن جد معلش هو البتاع وايد ثانية خرجك بتقولي بتحسوا انه ال بتحسوا انه الاساد بيعرفوا يفهموا ايوه بيعرفوا يفهموا يعني uh, look if the student can't understand the teachers will find a way to make them understand so mm-hmm. the teacher won't just say it's his fault he doesn't understand they will like search for they will search for a way for you to understand because like they actually care if you understand or not mm-hmm. it's not like just a job i'm getting my money and that's it no it's like i'm trying to help this person to be a better person mm-hmm. عشان إيه إحنا في مدرستنا كان في كان في كتير أساتذة بيهتموا عن جد إنه إنه الطالب يفهم بس ما بيهتموا كيف يوصلوا المادة لأنه فرضا في ال في الإنجليزي في عندهم في ال expectation تاعت الكورس إنه أنت لازم تكون خلصت historical text ولازم تكون درست كمية معينة من ال من الرايتنج سكيلز لازم تعرف كيف تكتب لازم تعرف كيف كيف تقرا صح ولازم تقرا شيء قديم فبخلونا نقرا اشياء هم بيختاروها ما بخلونا احنا نختار ايش بنقرا فهاي الاشياء بحس انه كثير مهم انه الطلاب يكون عندهم اختياراتهم طب بها انت شعرت المدارس في س... انت درست في السعوديه صح قبل ما تيجي هون أوه. اسهل ولا هون اسهل هون اسهل بكثير بس الفرق الوحيد انه هون في كثير انفسس على الريسيرش انه هون لازم تطلع فكرتك انت طريقتك انت ولازم تدور عليها انت في السعوديه ما عمرنا عملنا ريسيرش اول ما اجيت على كندا حكوا لنا اكتب الـ اكتب اللاب ريبورت حكيت لها ايش ايش هذا اللاب ريبورت ما حدا علمنا كيف نكتبه من قبل طيب في سؤال ثاني من احمد صابر احمد صابر بقول هل وجدتم بعض العنصريه في المدارس الكنديه ام لا نبدا من يمنى انت متحجبه يا يمنى صح اه اوكي هل وجدتي بسبب هذا الحجاب بعض المشاكل او مشاكل كثير او ما وجدتي مشاكل يعني شويه هو التيتشرز منيحين يعني ما تيتشرز ار فاين وذا يعني They're not racist or anything with me, but sometimes, يعني people from the like the office or something, يعني ناس بالإدارة أو شيء صعب يكون عنصري بين الطلاب. آه بين الطلاب والعرب وبالذات المسلمين يعني مثلاً مثل المحجبات أو كده. ما في مشاكل مع الطلاب التانيين الغير الغير مسلمين. يعني أنا ما شفتش يعني I didn't see a thing before بس مش متأكدة. أوكي. أوكي. يعني أنت شخصيا ما حدا إجا قال لك ليش لابسة مثلا الحجاب؟ لا لا ما حدا قال لي هيك شيء. هل بتحسي براحة في دينك في المدارس؟ أيوه بس ساعات يعني يعني إحنا من فترة قبل الـ COVID-19 كان لسه الظهر لازم بدري صح فكنا بنصلي م-م. وساعات لما كنت بروح يعني بسأل لو ينفع أصليها هيك التيتشر أو ال يعني الشخص اللي إن تشارج يعني كان ساعات بيكون عنصري شوية ويعني يعني ما بيكونش عايز يخليني أروح أصلي أو هيك شوية بس بس يعني يعني أدرس إجنور يعني خلاص أنت بكاثوليك سكول صح؟ آه أوكي عمر هل شعرت في عنصرية في المدارس الكندية؟ 
صراحة لا خالص يعني ما فيش ولا بين الستودنتس ولا بين التيشرز قصدي يعني التيشرز والستودنتس يعني صراحة ما كانش في أي عنصرية أنا عن نفسي يعني ما شفتش أي عنصرية أوكي أه بهاء <تصفيق> إحنا عندنا في الببليك سكول في نقدر حسب المدرسة إذا كان في طلاب بيهتموا إنهم يروحوا يصلوا الجمعة فرضا في طلاب نفسهم بيفتحوا غرفة وبيروحوا بيصلوا الجمعة وبيجيبوا خطبة من برا ومرات إذا كانت المدرسة كبيرة كفاية الإدارة بتفتح لهم الغرفة ويكون في تجهيزات من الإدارة نفسها ولكن ما بحس إنه في توعية للأساتذة عن اختلاف الثقافات إنه في كتير مرات الأساتذة سألوا أمي لأنه أنا لأنه أنا لما أكون في المدرسة بطلع في الحصة الثالثة بطلع أصلي إنها بتكون وقت الظهر ففي كتير مرات الأساد سألوا أمي إذا هو لازم يطلع يطلع يصلي كل كل يوم فهاي الأشياء يعني مرات بتجرح الواحد فبحس إنه ما بيكونوا واعيين طيب أنت تطلع بالفترة مثلا أنا يعني بدي أسأل سؤال هذا أنت أدن الظهر الساعة 12 مثلا وأنت حصتك بتنتهي 12 ونص No. فليش ما تطلع بعد الحصة؟ لأنه بعد الح... بين الحصص في خمس دقايق بس، ما بتقدر تتوضأ وتصلي، ما بيكون ما بترتاح بصلاتك. ما بتكونش مرتاح بالوضع. فيش شيء بتختار... بالوسط هاي بعد يعني نحكي الساعة 12 بيج بيج في عنا بريك. اوكي. Okay. في عنا بريكات بس لما يجي وقت البريك وقت الصلاة ما بيكون إجا. امم فمرات فالاساتذه بيروحوا بيلفوا على المدراء فرضا بيروحوا بيلفوا على الائمه ائمه المساجد وبيسالوهم هسه في شيء بنقدر نعمله عشان نخلي الطلاب يصلوا قبل الوقت حتى لو كان ظهر عشان ما عشان يقدروا انهم يروحوا على على الحصه تاعتهم طبعا ما بيعملوها عشان بدهم ان الطلاب يضلوا في الحصه بيعملوها عشان ما بدهم الطلاب يكونوا في الممرات لانه بيعتبروه انه الطلاب مش امان لهم يكونوا في الممرات بيعتبروا انه دائما لازم يكون في مراقب ويتش طبعا شيء انا بحسه من جهتي بحسه تافه بدهم برضه سكيورتي وسيفتي للطلاب يعني مش مش لدرجه مش لدرجه انك تخنق الطالب وتمنع الحقوق بتاعته حق من حقي من حقي في الكونستيتيوشن انه انا اني اطلع اصلي والمدرسه لازم توفر لي هذا الحق مش انه يحصرني في الخمس دقائق اللي هو شايفها مناسبه أنا بكيفي أنا أطلع أصلي مش هو اللي يقعدني طب بهاء لو نحكي هيك لا بهاء ويمنى وعمر بنحكي عن موضوع الآن الصلاة إحنا في في سؤال مهم جدا وصلنا من فاطمة علي بقولكوا ما هي الصعوبات التي تواجهونها في التأقلم مع المجتمع الكندي مش بس المدرسة أعتقد إنه مجتمعكم الكبير هو المدرسة بس بشكل عام المجتمع الكندي شو في صعوبات غير اللي حكيناها مين بحب يمنى؟ احنا ladies first من دائما <تصفيق> اوكي يعني I don't think في اي صعوبات يعني يعني مش يعني مش عارفة اي شيء بالضبط يمنى انت عمرك قديش هلا تقريبا؟ اب 16 Did you start finding a part time job? Um, no I just turned 16 today Oh wow happy, happy birthday, birthday. <تصفيق> <تصفيق> لا هذا يوم مناسب عشان نطلع لايف يعني المفروض هلا تكوني قاعده بتقطعي الكيكه انت <تصفيق> طيب ثانك يو اني واي عمر يا سو السؤال كان هل هناك صعوبات تواجهها في التاقلم مع المجتمع الكندي اصحابك الكنديين الغير عرب غير مسلمين غير ثقافة هل بتشد صعوبات؟ I think عمر فريز بهاء <تصفيق> الصعوبة الوحيدة اللي أنا لقيتها كانت شو اسمه الانتقال من مدرسة غير مختلطة لمدرسة مختلطة <تصفيق> بس ما في أي صعوبة تانية ما حسيت بأي شيء تاني Did you, uh, هل لقيت شغل بهاء بارت تايم شيء؟ لقيت بس ما ما إجى على هواي ف ما حسيت انه يعني مش شيء انا بستهويه، بس الاشياء اللي ما ما عندي شغل بس بعمل اشياء ثانيه اكسترا كيريكولرز فهلا في المدرسه الكل بيعرفني من وراها، انا موجود مم. على ستودنت كونسل، 
بمثلوا الطلاب في البورد و بطاقات الجمعه اه في كثير اشياء بعملها اوكي فولنتيرنج اوت سايد بحبش الفولنتيرنج عشان اذا انا بعمل فولنتيرنج بكون بدي اخذ عليه التوقيع تاع السوبرفايزر عشان بعدين اروح على المدرسه احكي لهم اطلع ايش بعمل فهي بحس انه الشغله مش بعملهاش لانه انا بدي اياها بعملها لانه في شيء بدي اياه من وراها بس يو هاف تو هذا يعني مانديتوري ولا لا؟ اه اه ما هو لما يصير مانديتوري بيبطل فولنتيرنج بيصير عمل اجباري فانا اخذت ال 40 ساعه تاعتي زدت عليهم خليتهم 51 يعني سلمت الورق اللي عندي وبعدين خلص بطلت سائف الموضوع بس اللي ما عند اللي مش موجود عندي في الفولنتيرنج بعمله باشياء ثانيه بعمل بي اكسترا كيركولرز جود عمر سالفه السؤال احنا انت قطعت معلش انا اسف لا تفضل So you know for like Arabs who just came to Canada صعوبات صعوبات هل في difficulties in in general with the with the Canadian communities Yes there is like uh finding food that is uh halal for example that's one example making friends because like uh you don't really know a lot of people uh who like <laughs> there is no big mosques here lots of big mosques so you won't make a lot of friends from mosques and uh it's hard to make friends because there isn't a lot of arabs here and you mean wh- wh- which, which city you are in Omar? Hmm? where do you live uh sorry what where, where do you live which city Yeah, I live in Ottawa. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. هل هل أنت بتحس في المدرسة فرضا بتحس إنه أنت بتشوف حالك في الكريكولم يعني بيدرسوك عن آه, عن أشياء بتمسكم؟ معلش حركة زكي. يعني في representation إلك في الكريكولم. ولا بتحس انه كريكولم غريب عنك ما ما لك اي علاقه فيه لا لينا يعني في في ال في في الهيستوري ساعات بيتكلموا عن حروب حصلت ما بين العرب وال العرب والبريطانيين حاجه كده يعني <تصفيق> يمنى religion انا سيم كويشن تو يو ام كويشن انه هل تجدي ريبريزنتيشن في الكريكولمز للانسان لك يعني انت بتشعري انه يو كونكتد تو ذس يعني اي دونت ثينك اي فيل كونكتد بس ساعات يعني بيكون في بعض الاشياء زي مثل ما عمر قال يعني في الهيستوري stuff about يعني, world wars and things like that and sometimes they mention Egypt my country mm-hmm. and يعني, but in general يعني, like like يعني, I'm okay with it but I don't think there is really a connection like with them يعني, with Canadians في سؤال جانا هلا انا هل المدرسين يصفوا مع الكنديين اكثر مع من طلاب العرب اوكي يعني اذا صارت مشكله بينك وبين واحد كندي وواحد عربي هل تتوقعوا انه بصفوا مع الكندي اكثر من العربي صراحه لا يعني هو الغلطان هم بيكونوا ضده وبيكونوا مع ال اللي ما الحق اوكي بها هل تشعر في شيء أه بحس انه يعني انا ما بيصير في مشاكل بيني وبين كثير طلاب واذا صار يعني ما ما بنروح عند الاساتذه في بوليسي بين الطلاب انه اذا صار في مشكله تدخلش اساتذه كيب ات اه اللي بي اللي بيصير في الصف بيضل في الصف بس يعني ما ما بحس انه الاساتذه بيعملوا هذا الكلام يمنى نفس الشيء برضه ما بحس انه الاساتذه بيعملوا هذا الكلام بس ممكن بعض الاساتذه مثلا لو في واحد من الطلاب شيء ممكن يعمل هيك يصف مع الكندي مثلا بس يعني انا بالنسبه لي ما شفتش اوكي في سؤال مهم جدا اللي هو 
صعوبة الهوية والإحساس بها ما أعرفش إذا وصلتكم الصورة هل تشعرون في هناك صعوبة بالهوية أنك تربرزنت الهوية العربية إحنا بتعرفوا إحنا عرب ومسلمين وبنفتخر بعروبتنا وبإسلامنا وإحنا موجودين في مجتمع جميل جدا المجتمع الكندي اللي بيحترم هذه العادات بشرط أنه نحترم القانون الكندي يعني مش عشان مثلا أنا بدي أصلي الظهر أطلع بنص الشارع أوقف المرور كله عشان أصلي الظهر في نص الشارع لا بحترم الناس الثانيين والناس لازم تحترمني فهل بتشعروا في تحديات في صعوبة أنك تظهر هويتك العربية المسلمة إحساسك فيها من الداخل I believe that there is a lot of diversity in Canada there is a lot of respect for different uh, different religions, different cultures, and I believe that it's really easy to actually show that you're a Muslim. Like, nobody will say, oh, you're a Muslim, you're a bad person, stuff like that. There's a lot of diversity and a lot of respect. Nobody would attack you because you're of a different culture. So you're proud of it? Yep, of course I am. Yumna? Yeah, same thing as Al Mariani. I'm also proud of it, and like, like, I'm wearing a hijab right now, so like, if I wasn't proud of it, I'd be like kind of scared to wear it or something. Like, I'd be like scared if they're gonna judge me or like bully me for it. But like, I'm not like that, and like, I'm actually proud of it, and I'm wearing it. I'm like, I'm okay with it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the kind of the the people that are at the school, because for me, I don't have many Arab friends. Well, I have more white friends than Arab friends, because the kind of uh, people that I have at my school aren't people I'd like to be friends with. Like they're basically they're basically gangs. Like there are there are a lot of Arab gangs at my school. Mm -hmm. They just hang out in um, in groups and go to smoke during lunch and just do things that I wouldn't want to be a part of. So it's that kind of um, that kind of person that I just avoid. And a lot of the Arabs end up going there. So I just. Avoid so them all. Your Canadian friends accept you as is? Yeah, they do. We don't we don't talk a lot about about um, our cultures. So eventually people would like you would lose a sense of who you are as a person because you stop talking about it for a long time. But that doesn't mean that like you completely forget it. But what's the alternative? Like going with people who will ruin who you are as a person instead of who you are as a community. Yeah. Tell me who's your friend. I will tell you who you are. Yeah. Yumna, في سؤال very مهم. خلال فترة الحجر هاي اللي إحنا عايشينها الآن. Keep your relation مع your family, مع your parents, مع your brothers and sister. هل تشعر في تحسن؟ في هذه العلاقة أم في سوء في العلاقة؟ أم أعتقد أنها نفس الشيء يعني أو ممكن شوي تحسن بس يعني أعتقد نفس الشيء عشان إحنا يعني عايشين مع بعض هيك يا بس عادة يعني مش شرط نكون كلوز إف وي ليف توجذر يعني يمكن أحيانا السيل فونز والهاي سو دو يو فيل هلا أنت يور كلوزر تو يور فاميلي؟ Yeah, yeah, ممكن عشان يعني I see them every day وهيك بس أصلاً You have to <تصفيق> صح بس يعني إحنا close يعني مش هقول إن إحنا يعني يعني هو في علاقة ما بيننا يعني علاقة منيحة الحمد لله Good What about you, Omar? <تصفيق> yeah, it has definitely been better because uh, like when there is no Hajj for the coronavirus. Quarantine. Yeah, there is no quarantine for the coronavirus. Like uh, everybody is at school, work, or going outside. But now everybody is just together. Like you can't go anywhere. So the relationship has to be better, or nobody can live in this life. You are stuck with them, yeah. <laughs> is there is yeah. there something you do to keep the relationship getting better? Sorry, what? Is there something you do to maintain the relationship? Yes, we play a lot of games together. Like we play ping pong mm -hmm. indoors and we watch a lot of movies together. We play a lot of board games. 
like we we even read Quran together like every day. Good job, good job, good job. So what about your uh, social life with your friends? Uh, I think you are missing some of your friends because you can't see them. So what do you do? Do you have alternative, uh, Omar? Yeah, if I'm missing my friends, I just text them. And uh, like, if I really want to see them, I can just FaceTime them. Technology hasn't left anything like uh, be hard nowadays. Everything is approachable by the internet. What about you, Yumna? Yeah, same thing. Like, of course, I miss my friends and like, I miss seeing them in real life. But, like, I text them every day and like, sometimes I FaceTime them. So, like, that's like good so my my questions to all of you so all the cool okay how to talk about in a face-to-face meeting and communication they the social media who are on tariq facetime or whatever uh, app you use oh ahsan or as well yani is to talk about khalini abda min yumna Okay, like for me, I prefer real life, yani face to face, because like the person will be in front of me and like I'll be able to see them and like their expression when they're talking to me instead of like if I'm texting them, like they might be sending laughing emojis and like they might be crying or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really know what's going on, and yeah, that's why I prefer like real life, like face to face. Omar. I do prefer real life because you can't hide who you are in real life. You actually have to be yourself in real life, but in the inter like online, you can just be any person. You can act like you're a happy person. Like Yumna said, if you're a sad person, you can just act. But in real life, it's harder to hide the thing. Like it's uh, better in real life because you actually get to talk to people and see them like mm -hmm. in real life yeah. Yeah. for me i prefer online because you can you can achieve like similar things as long as i i'm not forced to stay at home for example if i have a friend that i haven't seen in a while we can go out but not anymore because we're in a quarantine but if I would like to leave, I can leave in a normal situation. And online, I can actually be in control of who I am. So I can be in control of um, how I look. I can be in control of um, what emotions I choose to display. But in real life, I can't, ha I can't really hide anything. Okay, so we'll the more take... control I have, the better I feel. We'll take this last question. من محمد تميمي هل المدرسة جهزتك لتكون قادر للتعبير عن نفسك وتبني شخصيتك بشكل قوي هل المدرسة جهزتك لتكون قادر للتعبير عن نفسك وتبني شخصيتك بشكل قوي حيكون يمكن آخر سؤال فإذا مش فاهمينه بترجمه اللي فهمه ممكن نجاوبه يمنى فهمت السؤال طيب. Do you think the school already prepared you to be uh, to to be able to describe or to present yourself to build your characters uh, in a good way? Uh, I mean, the school here in Canada. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, in school we're like independent kind, of, like like they give us, for example, the work, and then they like give us due dates for it. Like we have to be like, like let them namelu, and like we have to submit our work like on time and stuff like that, and that makes us yani, um, um, not sure the kilma liha, but responsible. Yani that makes us responsible. Yes, yeah, that's good. Okay, what about Omar? So school teaches you a lot of skills and how to be a productive productive person when you grow up, like how to uh, public speak, uh, how to like be responsible, like Yumna said, giving you tasks and giving you deadlines to finish them on time. And uh, like as cool is important, 
Home is also important because they teach you a lot of skills too, just like school. So home is as important as school in teaching you skills on how to be a productive person. المدارس بشكل طبيعي بتعلمك الأشياء اللي أنت بتحتاجها عشان تصير كويس في حياتك اللي بعد المدرسة بتعلمك السكيلز اللي أنت تحتاجها زي ال public speaking زي ال responsibility الأشياء هاي ولكن ما بتعلمك السكيلز اللي أنت بتحتاجها عشان تقدر تتعامل مع الناس فرضا لو في مشكلة بين اثنين ما بيعلموك كيف أنت تحلها لحالك دائما بيحكوا لك روح عند الإدارة هم بيحلوا لك إياها ما ما بيعلمونا الاشياء اللي ما بيعلمونا كيف نتعامل بين بعض، هاي الاشياء احنا بنتعلمها لحالنا وفي كثير ناس بتتاذى عبين ما حدا يتعلمها او هم يتعلموها بنفسهم. So uh, انا بدي احكي سوري تفضل عمر. For what Baha said like that they don't teach us how to like uh, encounter IRL uh, situations that's what the house actually teaches us. Like that's what home teaches us how to encounter these like situations. Not everyone has a home though. Like there are a lot of students that don't have homes. I've seen many students with broken homes and uh, just very miserable lives. They go to public school for a reason. For like school isn't just a place to learn. It's a place to build who you are. And more importantly, it's a place that you can be safe at. Like if you don't like your home situation, you can go to school. You have six hours where you can just disappear from home and no one is going to have a problem with that. That's one of the very important things about school. So, so if you have a problem at home, you can leave. Uh, I you are lucky uh, uh, you're living in this era. If you have the internet, uh, you can find a lot of things, uh, resources, sahel jiddan. In the time we were living, The best teacher for you is yourself remember this guys لن يعلمك احد افضل مما انت تعلم نفسك الخبره اللي بتستفيدها من كل شيء بتسويه في الحياه بنفسك هي افضل خبره لانها بتضلها في دماغك بتضلها في ايديك ف teacher they try to give ايش uh, عندهم بيعطوك النولج بس the best knowledge it's the knowledge you look for يعني go the extra mile uh, try to uh, talk to people talk to other, other people it doesn't matter if their information is wrong so this is your time to analyze شو حكوا تدور على تعمل research تدور على المعلومة الصح تدور على السورس الصح هون انت بتقدر تعمل build your knowledge okay? معظم الناس اللي كانوا leaders في المجتمعات ما كانوا ليدر لانهم دا كانوا بالمدرسه شاطرين او ممتازين لانهم they built their own knowledge so it's very important not to depend only on school or in home depend on yourself بالسكيلز بال 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 بالاكسبيرينس حاول انك تساعد في كل شيء انت بتقدر عليه يعني حتى الطبخ الناس بتضحك انه بتقول انا ليش اتعلم طبخ انا لما تغربت أه يعني فادني اني كنت اساعد امي شوي في الطبخ ف these experiences يعني انت بتشعر انه هلا you don't need them بس maybe after a year or two years لما تروح على another university بعيده عن بيتك 200 300 500 كيلو يمكن 1000 كيلو راح تفيدك فانا يعني كثير كثير حابب اني اضل معكم في بحكي استاذ محمد انه حقيقه شباب رائعين شباب مستقبل بحق جمعوا الخير من الثقافة العربية والخير من الثقافة الكندية وأنا بأيده كنت رائعين ونفتخر فيكم I'm proud of you guys يمنى thank you for your time عمر you did amazing and you can't رائع بها حوار جميل أنا دائما بستمتع أكون معك هعطي يمنى the last minute if she wants to say anything oh I just want to say thanks for having me and like I really enjoyed it thank you too for coming keep positive Omar thanks so much for having me it was a great conference like I was do you have TikTok Omar no 
Uh, I have Good one. Job. Subscribe to mine, huh? Please don't. Follow me. <laughs> don't don't give them don't give TikTok any more attention than it has. Baha, do you want to say anything? Thank you for attending the conference. Thank you for watching uh, from Facebook. Thank you all for being supportive of what we have here. And thank you for supporting our uh, children and our futures. بشكركم جميعا مرة ثانية بشكر كل من شارك معنا في هذا اللقاء الفيرتشوال كل من كتب وساهم وعلق وسأل لقاء رائع حبينا نفتح مواضيع يمكن مواضيع مش دائما بتنفتح بعض الأهالي سمعوا نصيحتي للأهالي برضو أنهم to stay close to their children أحيانا إحنا بننسى الحياة بتجرنا ل أمور كبيرة وننسى أن أولادنا عم بيكبروا وعم بيصيروا أكبر من هاي الأمور فنتمنى لكم السلامة جميعا ولأهاليكم ولأبنائكم وإن شاء الله نمر من هذه الفترة اللي كانت صديقنا حسن بيرح سماها رحلة العودة إلى الذات فيمكن نرجع لأهالينا ونرجع لأولادنا حاب اذكركم بلقاء غدا اللي راح يكون انا والاستاذ محمد تميمي والاستاذ زياد حنستقبل مكالماتكم اتصالاتكم حنحكي بشكل عام عن هذا البرنامج ايش اللي عجبكم ايش اللي ما عجبكم ايش اللي بدكم اياه في المستقبل دردشه معكم حنحكي بشكل عام عن مستقبل هذا البرنامج ان شاء الله تكونوا معنا وتحياتي لكم جميعا وتصبحون على ألف خير ومرة تانية بنحكي ليومنا هابي بيردي شكرا جزيلا هابي بيردي يلا سلام شباب سلام <تصفيق> <تصفيق>